All right, good day. Uh, today we're going to be tying a piper, or uh, we call garfish overseas in different places like the UK, a few other or places. Um, you can play with colours, do different variations. Uh, the one I'm tying today will be using a, a range of sort of silvery grey uh, bait fish colours. Uh, this one in the vice, so it's got it's hard to tell in this light, but uh, underneath of it's the uh, predator fibres are white. And then it's a kind of silver fox over the top. Uh, if you saw that photo right at the start, you can see it's a, a pretty pale, silvery colouring fish around here. And with that little hot, hot spot, uh, orange nose on it as well. But you can play around, do different colours. We want chartreuses, or blues, or uh, whatever floats your boat. And the other option as well, and uh, you might just be able to make it out as and play the colours on the snout of it as well. Um, in this case I've used some blue tinsel. Uh, can will flash and the, the fibres and thread uh, that I'll be using will be from the, the great team at Semperfly. But we'll we'll get into it and go from there. Alright, so you want to start off, get your hook in the uh, vice. I use the Stonfo Kaiman. Uh, it's a great one for uh, both trout flies, saltwater flies. And the hook I'll be using is an Arex SA220 streamer, uh, size number one. Now you can go bigger, you can go smaller, but uh, this is what I need for the fly box at the moment, so that's what we're getting. Now you just get in there, the old uh, Stonfo is a nice little groove. Uh, further down it for the uh, bigger hooks, which will uh, get it held in there nice and tightly. And there we go. Alright, next step is to start your thread. Uh, now a lot of saltwater patterns you do tend to use a uh, thicker thread. Uh, I quite like using the nano silk on these though. There's uh, right where it's you know, tying the material and tying the eyes. I don't want to end up with a big bulky uh, mass of materials there. Uh, the other thing as well, and on this one I won't be putting the wrapping the flash around the shank, I'm going to keep it just with a thread wrap and I quite like how the nano silk is quite thin and you just if you go back to that photo right at the start of the actual piper you know, it's almost just a grey colour you know, on its nose or its beak or you know, whatever you want to call it so I like this because once I get past that point one I'm not building up the bulk and then I can you know, get rid of that sort of metallic sheen and once you put the UV finish over it uh, no, I like the look of it. Right. Now, on the underside of these, I like to tie in a little bit of red flash. Uh, see a few guys, they might use a little bit of red marker to make that uh, appearance of gills or uh, a little bit of bleeding or you know, a few other ideas around what it is. But yeah, you can use all sorts of stuff. I, I'm liking this uh, uh, eye stubbing here from. Again, okay, simplify. Um, you just only need a very little bit, and a bit hard to see. Uh, you just want to make sure it's nice and tapered out. I don't want it like finishing, um, just cut straight down. You want a bit of a taper. And there's going to be a bit, a bit of excess at the end of it, but I'll uh, take that and use it for the next one. You just tie it in there, right on the bend of the hook. Now, just above it and it's going to float out the back and dangling behind it which is why I think for this one it's more uh, looking like it's bleeding from the gills or something like an injured bait fish or piper. And just trim off the excess and save that for uh, later. And just make sure it's nice and wrapped in. And again just as everything's going to be tied into this point that's again why I'm going with a, a thinner thread. Now this stuff's super strong. Uh, so far, fingers crossed, I have had no issues. Yeah. Right, next material we'll be tying in is the predator fibers. And I'm using this to start building the body for the fish. Um, I'm using one, hopefully I'll pick it up, the, the color there. It's called silver baitfish, and uh, I'm sure amongst many other species, but it's almost like it's made for these pipers. It's just. A wonderful mix of like greys and whites, but you only want to take you know, just a fraction. You don't need a huge amount. Uh, sparseness is pretty important for these. You want it to almost have a 
the translucency. So, uh, by translucency, I mean it's just the, the gap between the fibers and everything like that. So, I'm only using about that much. Pull tight, it's maybe, I don't know, double the, the gauge of the hook. You can just trim that off. And again, I sort of mentioned it with the, the ice, the ice dubbing. You don't want it to end uh, just flat like that. We want to dub it. Uh, we want to taper it out. And if I just grab a few of the fibers and just slowly tweak them out, and I'll just pull out and you know, just end up with a sort of imagine like the end of a pencil. Uh, as far as length goes, about one. Mm. Tighten about double the shank of the hook. You can go longer, but okay, I've had no issues. And you're just going to tighten the exact same spot and just give it a couple. And we'll just get that out of the way and trim it off. It's gone out of shot a bit, but uh, we don't have uh, much space here, so just working what I got. And you can repeat that again. So you want just two stretches of this uh, fibre, and you're just going to measure it out again. But this time, rather than using the shank, you just want to go, or I like to go, just a fraction, just a fraction longer than the uh, one you had uh, underneath it. And then just tie them in nice and tight. Again, it's on that same spot, uh, which again is why I'm using the uh, nano silk. There's probably other threads you can use as well, depending how you want to go about things. If you want to have a, a bigger spot to you know, stick your eyes on at the end, by all means, uh, you've got a six sort nano silk as well, which is fantastic. But Maybe it's a degree of laziness. I've got that thread on me now and I've gotten used to using it, so we'll just uh, take it for what it is and enjoy it. And just want to get those loose ends just caught in there and build it back up and we'll put a little bit of flash in the middle. And we'll show you the end of the fly. You'll see what I mean about the, the tapered uh, look. It's going to be when you get to the end of it, it'll be more like that. Alright, onto the flash in the middle. It gives it a bit of life, makes it stand out. Um, so, we're going to be using uh, some of the new range of uh, flash materials from Semperfly. And I'll try not to get too uh, tongue tied over this one, but it's Semper Flash Mirror Flash Blue Iris. Uh, it's the uh, full name colour, but it's beautiful. Stunning stuff. We've done some great work in uh, bringing out all this. And you just want about three strands. And you just want to lay it down so it sort of runs down. That'll be If you're tying, it'll be your side. At the moment, it's my side, but you'll work it out when you get there. It's on this side, so you just tie it in. get it nice and secure and then you can either cut some more off but I think I've got just enough here to to bend this back and join in roughly about the same if it's too long yep, no, I've worked that perfectly it's all nice and tapered and just sits in there in the middle and yeah this is all sort of flopping down at the moment but once we've got that cashmere monkey uh, material over the top oh, we're good to go and we're going to put a little bit of UV in here which is going to stiffen it up and stop the tail rate so you'll you'll see what it, what it does then all right last step for the actual tying of the body of the fish uh, before we move into doing its snout you know, possibly one of the coolest names for materials uh, cashmere monkey and silver fox yeah, it's just a grey colour, uh, but not too much of a jump uh, from what we're already using. Uh, again, I've referenced it a couple of times, but if you look back at that picture right at the start, 
That's a little change in colour and not much so. You only want a, a little bit. About that. That's pulled tight, so that gives you an idea. But you got some leeway. And again, as with the predator fibres in the portrait, I think I might have. Uh, Called this stuff the wrong name right at the start, but it is cashmere monkey. But you don't want it having that straight flat end. You want to taper it out and get that sort of uh, still a bit flat. And just pull it out and roll it between your fingers, and then do it tight in. Again, just a yeah, it's a fraction of a bit longer than the last one. And it's just going to give you that long tapered body that these fish have and just get that tight in there. And if you use your straps make sure it stays in the same spot. We can clinch it down and it's in a few minutes, a few reps, not minutes, I don't want to be sitting here that long tying on the same thing, but yeah, just keep an eye out for your your needle, your hook point rather. And we'll trim that off. And usually I find uh, the time at this point, uh, it's getting a bit short, but I'll save that for some uh, other little patterns later on. Okay, I'm liking the shape of it. And then we'll just switch that in. And you can take a pick here. You can leave it at that. You can see that sparkle in there. That's beautiful. Or you can put another, another little, just another little bit of the uh, cashmere monkey. I'm going to do it again just because I enjoy saying that I'm using something called cashmere monkey. But if I'm doing it again, I'll generally only use about half for the quantity of that first lot. It's just to give it that really defined grey top and silver. Uh, silver bottom or white bottom, depending on what colours you're using. I'll just taper this out again. Nice taper, and about the same length, and just tie it in. And as I've mentioned in other videos, if you can as much as you can, just you don't want to have you know miles and miles of thread out. The more thread out you have, the, the less control you're going to have, and you know, personally I find it makes life just a, a little bit harder. I generally work with about an inch or so. But different strokes and all that for the different folks, and try how you're comfy. Alrighty. And just snip off the, uh, the end of that. And by this point, we're going to have a nice bit of uh, the material tied in there that we're going to be able to use to attach our eyes, which we'll do uh, very shortly. But the last little little stretch, but I'm liking the look of that. Right. As I said before, like you can use uh, flash down this part. Personally, at the moment, I'm just enjoying uh, just using the uh, the thread just to give it a fine fine cover. It just takes away uh, some of that metallic look. And I try to keep it as much as I can touching wraps. And just make your way up. I just want it nice and even. You don't want to you know, all sorts of bumps and, and what have you, what have you through it. I'm probably missing a little bit. I've had to turn the lighting right down low so I don't uh, blow all this out with the light reflecting off it in the camera. Um, but yeah, as much as you can, try to keep it with uh, uh, touching wraps and just make your way up. When we get to the, the tip of it. Uh, that's where we're going to add in 
some of our it's using Perdigon body for it. You know, the colour that came out with that, it's a fluoro orange, but just matches the that sort of orange tip to their nose that the you know, Piper get. Just fits it perfectly. And once you get to know, maybe I'll say about half an eye length, you can just smash it out to the front. And, uh, yeah. So the next material is uh, this Perdigon body, again a, a new one uh, from the team at Simplify, but it's a beautiful colour and just really captures the, the colour that those uh, Piper get on their nose, just on the very tip of it. Not sure why they do, but if anyone has any ideas I'd love to know. Those quirky little things from nature. But I'll just snip off a few inches so you can use it for a couple flies. I usually tie a few of these, so I'll snip off a few inches and go from there. You just want to secure it in place right at the tip. And it's really not going to take much, but I'll watch that a little bit so. I probably say don't talk about it too often, but you know, don't be afraid if you've if you've botched something. I mean, depending on what your end game is, if you're just tying uh, dirty old hair and coppers, and you're not too worried about how they look, by all means. But if you're not happy with something, by all means, go back, uh, take whatever's uh, got you down off, and do it again. Again, depends what you're after. You just want to, so you got that secured in, just wrap it forward. It doesn't need to be long, you're looking at about half the eye length. And you can either stop there and have it real light or go back over it. And it's just really going to make that colour pop, so to say. But yeah, once you're there, once you're back at the quay. Just tie it off. And I try not to get too close because you are using that thinner material. And it can kind of get sucked into the eye a bit and just gets a bit difficult. But first I tie it off and last but not least we will whip finish. This will be the last we use of any thread for this fly. The rest is all going to be UV resin. Okay. I like to tie it twice, but again, given it's going to be covered with resin, it's probably unnecessary, but force of habit. So one of the problems these flies uh, do have, be not careful, uh, is that they'll tail wrap. Uh, through the process of casting, you'll you'll find I hope I'm a bunch is too much. You'll find it wraps around there, and sure enough, which leaves you trying to do this on the side of a boat. Whoever's taking you out can grump at you because you can't uh, cast at the fish when they turn up. So, one of the tricks that uh, we've found is if you take some uh, UV cure, uh, whatever your, your brand of choice is, so, as long as it works for you and it stays hard, and yeah, and you just want to coat it back. You just want to put a coat on. You don't want to go far. You only need to go back to about like, just in line with the. Uh, Bend of the hook down about here, that makes sense, and just put a nice couple of dollops on the end. I like to use the bodkin, I'll just uh, put some out onto a little tray I've got here and pick it up with the bodkin and, and apply it on. I just find it's a bit more accurate rather than uh, ending up with a uh, UV cure everywhere because it's and squeeze too hard and I'll put a few uh, jab it through there a little bit and then set it with your torch. Alright, hopefully 
it's uh, not going to last anyone's eyes too much on screen when it gets to that end, but just give it a good up. Uh, Now that is uh, nice and hard, you can see it's sort of uh, turning on that point. Right, eyes. Now I use hologram, hologram dome eyes in silver. They are five sixteenths of an inch. I'm not quite sure what that is in uh, mils, just how they came. Uh, anyone knows? And it's pretty much just relying on that uh, UV cure again. Okay, and I'll start on your side. Just so you can see what I'm doing. Just put a little dollop of that there. Get the eye on. And just work out where you want it. You kind of want it in line with uh, where that bulk of material uh, finished off, and sorry about my big old finger, I just got to hold it there while I give this a, give this a blast. There we go. And yeah, and we'll do the other side and carry on. It's just another little dollop. Just enough to put in there. We're going to fill all that up in a minute, but just get enough there to hold the eye on. Same way, little black dot down the bottom. Just make sure that they are all uh, lined up. Actually, quite handy doing it with the camera. You can uh, I'm gonna see if it is or isn't, but you, know, you want it in line so it just sits straight in front of the water. Alright. Alright, home stretch. Uh, next steps, it's uh, again, we're still using our UV cure. Uh, pretty much any uh, fly tying threads out at this point. But it's all just to secure it in and secure those uh, wraps. So you just want to take uh, some more of your UV and just fill in that gap between those eyes and a little bit back over again where you've already put some to strengthen that tail. And just fill it in. This is just going to keep those eyes uh, attached. A mate who uh, took one of these up to Tauranga um, a couple of days ago, uh, by all accounts, he's uh, had some good fun with it. And a few fish uh, wanted to have a good old chomp on them. But again, you just want to strengthen that. Uh, in the day they do take a hammering, those saltwater fish are not, uh, not the gentlest in the world and they'll uh, tear through your flies over time. Now just keep a nice cover on it. See it said it's going to roll around and wrap around to that, uh, that nose here, apparently. I'm tying a few here in coppers and odds and ends because I keep picking up little bits of fluff. I could just be in the bed. <laughs> uh, either way, but I like to just keep working it and keep playing with it until you get where you're, where you're happy. Um, the photo that I've got at the start is slightly different in the colours, but it's all the same theory. Uh, not by much. I think the only difference is that the uh, predator fibers on the bottom are, are white instead of that uh, silver bait fish. But once you're happy, give it a blast. This has ended up getting a bit, a bit darker with the lighting. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do this, but we want to fill in this underside as well. So all through here, 
and on the underside of the hook. Again, we're just making sure it's all secure. Uh, so I'll just get a little bit more of this. I'll go a little bit there, but last thing I want is running out midway through. And we just take some more. Again, don't need to be uh, shy with it. You're filling in quite a big space. And it's just going to hold those eyes in. And again, you know, you could uh, just knock the light over there. Sorry. Uh, again, you know, you could use more thread wrap, but you're still going to end up doing this. You're still going to want to fill all this in slowly but surely. And we'll get there. And the reason I've turned the vise upside down is just so it doesn't drip back down the body. Uh, having it on the angle can be a little difficult, but you know, by turning it upside down, I've got it nice and flat. And we're just filling that up. Uh, we'll do that at the top. And just get a nice little coating of that uh, UV finish or UV cure. And just keep it nice and easy. And this is going to hold the eyes on. There we go. One last uh, little black. I'll lift it up and give you a look at it. And we'll go from there. That's it. Last step. Easy as. There we have it. One hyper fly. There we have it, Piper, Garfish, whatever you want to call it, but we've got that nice little red under there, silver at the top, and grey on the bottom, we can use white or whatever colour again with the top, you want to use chartreuse, you can use predator fibres instead of the uh, cashmere monkey, and then you can use the uh, flashy one in the middle, it's going to be a little life, you can go bigger or smaller on the eyes, it's uh, like a lot of them, play with it, have some fun. Have a look at what's swimming around in your local waters and you know, basic colours on that, but there we have it. And I'll put links to uh, all the materials I can in the bottom. And uh, have a material list at the start and obviously with the uh, list of uh, links in the description in the video, you know, you'll be able to get in there, but happy tying and you know, if you whip one up and you're, you're posting on the old uh, social medias, by all means tag me. I'd love to see what uh, people are tying up and see how you're going. All the best. Happy tying.